Let's remember the history again and talk about such an interesting military historical phenomenon as cannon armored vehicles, more precisely, about their last Soviet representative Botanum, how this tank on wheels was created and how it fought, and most importantly, why it was on it that the era of cannon armored vehicles on the chassis of serial trucks ended in the Soviet Union. Soviet cannon armored vehicles rightfully became one of the symbols of the initial period of the Second World War. After all, the most active phase of the combat use of such armored vehicles falls on 1941-1942. It is mainly then that they can be seen in both Soviet and German newsreels. In the latter case, mainly as vehicles either destroyed or abandoned due to lack of fuel, breakdowns or getting stuck in the mud, which later became enemy trophies. So, where did the hero of our story Botanem start his journey from? In the 1930s, the Soviet Union developed and put into production several models of light and medium class armored vehicles with two or three axles, with machine gun or machine gun and cannon armament, including even floating models. The three axle Botan M, without exaggeration, became the crowning achievement of this work, incorporating all the experience of creating this type of military equipment into mastering it in a series. In terms of firepower, this armored vehicle was comparable to the T-26 light tank, the most common at that time, from which they took the tower for it. At the same time, the use of a serial truck chassis made it less expensive to manufacture. It would seem that it would be easier. You take a standard truck chassis, produced by hundreds and thousands, put an armored hull on it, and on the hull, a turret with a gun, again mass produced at a factory, only a tank one. The price comes out relatively small, while the firepower is like that of the same T-26 tank. And by the standards of the 1930s, this tank was a formidable fighting vehicle. Speaking specifically about the Botan M, it was decided to use the chassis of the Gas 3 a truck with a 6x4 wheel arrangement, launched in two series in 1936 at the Gorky Automobile Plant, which, due to the additional third axle, turned out to be more load-bearing and passable compared to the two-axle Gas 2A. However, it was not possible to simply take and hoist an armored hull on this chassis. Even with bulletproof armor, the turret armored car turned out to be too heavy for the serial undercarriage. Therefore, the chassis decided to lighten. To do this, at the Isfra plant, where mass production of armored vehicles was organized, the wheelbase of the Gas 3 a chassis was reduced and the rear overhang was shortened. For the same purpose, the rear ledge, where the ammunition was stored, was removed from the turret borrowed from the T-26 tank, and the stacking of shells was transferred to the lower part of the main body. Separately, it is worth mentioning the tires of such armored vehicles. Indeed, since the crew and units are protected from shelling by armor, the tires turn out to be the most vulnerable spot while being critical for mobility, and hence for performing a combat mission. Therefore, instead of the usual serial tires, the armored car was equipped with the so-called cosmetics. Outwardly, they look like the most common pneumatic tires that were put on gas trucks in those years, but they are bulletproof, because instead of an air chamber, their tire is filled with sponge rubber. The applicability of cosmetics, which were also equipped with field guns, had one serious limitation. When driving at speeds over 40 km per hour, they began to overheat. Therefore, in peacetime, ordinary tires from trucks were often put on the wheels of armored vehicles. How did the project of the Soviet tank car develop? First, in 1936, the Isfra plant located in Leningrad mastered the production of a three-axle cannon armored car Ba-6 with a combat weight of 5 tons with a crew of 4 on the Gaz-3 chassis. He was armed with a 45mm cannon and two machine guns. And starting from 1939, the Ba-6M, which became its development, went into production, the design of which took into account the experience of the war in Spain. For example, the fuel tank installed in front of the Gaz 3 cab was moved behind it, and the body armor plates were placed with a more rational slope. The serial model of this armored car was named Baten. The baptism of fire Baten took place in an armed conflict with the Japanese in battles in Mongolia, where it proved to be a very formidable weapon. But a number of its shortcomings were also revealed. 
For example, the location of the gas tanks in the fighting compartment was recognized as unsuccessful, or rather, dangerous for the crew, literally behind the heads of the driver and machine gunner sitting in front. In addition, if in the Mongolian steppes the Baten's maneuverability was still acceptable, then during the Soviet-Finnish war, snow completely fettered the maneuver of the Baten formations, literally tying them to the roads. Tracks for installation on the rear pair of wheels did not always solve this problem. Therefore, in September 1939, the Isra plant began production of the upgraded Botanum, in which the turret traverse mechanism was improved, the silencer and track belts were changed, boxes for spare radio tubes and tools were installed, and the fuel tanks were taken out of the fighting compartment, placing them in armored boxes on wings of the rear wheels. As it usually happens, as a result of modernization, the curb weight increased, which increased to 5.5 tons. The Botanum was produced in this form until September 1941. But why didn't the production of the Botanum continue, moving production, say, beyond the Urals, as was done with many other types of weapons? This did not happen for the same reason that the production of the T-26 tank was curtailed due to weak firepower and armor protective properties. After all, armored vehicles in the 1930s were created primarily to counter infantry and cavalry, which were not protected in any way on the battlefield and did not have the means to fight armored vehicles. But with the outbreak of World War E, the tasks of armored vehicles changed significantly. Now they were opposed by anti-tank artillery, which infantry units were becoming more and more saturated with, and it was necessary to hit not only infantrymen and firing points, but increasingly used equipment with anti-shell armor. It is not surprising that in the fall of 1941 the Soviet Union decided not to produce cannon armored vehicles anymore, and they did not even begin to complete the development of a more powerful and heavy cannon armored Carbo 11 on the chassis of a more load-bearing Z6, although the production of light tanks continued for about two more years. Why? The fact is that when faced with strong anti-tank fire, even the lightest tank could carry out a detour. That is, simply bypass the guns, regardless of the surrounding terrain, through any dirt or snow, and hit the flank or rear. But wheeled armored vehicles could not do that the patency did not allow. They were tightly tied to the road network and could not oppose maneuver to anti-tank weapons. And without this, in World War E, they had no chance of success in battle. That is why the Soviet Union stopped the production of wheeled cannon armored vehicles forever. In the second half of the 20th century, they were replaced by wheeled armored vehicles for completely different tasks. Armored personnel carriers and reconnaissance vehicles with machine guns. As for the Botanum, the history of its production is characterized by the following statistics. Ba 6 was built in the amount of 431 copies, and its successor Ba 10 became the most massive pre-war Soviet armored car and the most massive Soviet armored car with a gun. It was made in the amount of 3,386 copies, of which about 2,000 are the most advanced Ba 10 -em. In the Soviet army, this armored car ended its combat biography at about the same place where it started, in the summer of 45, in the fight against the Japanese in Mongolia. But the Finns used the captured, and the Chinese, donated Baten S for quite a long time, until the end of the 1950s.